Okay, so I have the spring, right? And there's a stream coming out of it. And, you know, there's a couple other little springs around that feed into this little stream. And I just found out that my property border is like way down the hill where this little stream goes. So, I should be able to uh, put in a like a hydro power station, you know, a water reel that makes electricity for the lapers way down at the bottom of that thing and get some decent power out of it. So, I mean, I'm not going to be able to do that until the snow melts because, uh, yeah, let's look outside. Oh, yeah, everything is, like, frozen. Um, but I can make the generator now. And I happened to come across this like a year ago and basically it's half a generator a bunch of coils of wire around this like steel armature and in a nutshell if I can get magnets in here spinning around then it'll make electricity out of these little wires here so this is what I've started with so far um, the first thing I did was take a piece of this this is polycarbonate it has like white sheet on it right now but it peels off and I cut two circles out with a hole saw and yeah I know hole saws weren't really meant to cut through this stuff but you know it made a lot of noise and I had to go kind of slow so I didn't like melt into the plastic too much but anyway I got two circles and I glued them together with like plastic glue doesn't matter what it was and uh, the hole that the hole saw drilled happened to fit this uh, steel axle that I had I, I always have a bunch of steel axles because anytime I find like parts that I might be able to use I just keep them in a pile um, anyway it fit and now to get the magnets on here here's one magnet that I've attached already it's a neodymium magnet sometimes we call them no dimes because uh, that's just what we call them sometimes but anyway we're putting no dimes all around here or I am at least so I drilled holes all over the place see all those holes yeah lots of holes uh, for these to fit in now I didn't have quite the right size drill bit so I kind of have to rotor root around the hole a little bit to be able to get the magnets in and that's what I'm gonna be doing tonight I'm gonna be gluing magnets in all these holes and I didn't do a super good job of, you know, getting the holes perfectly spaced out around the thing because, you know, I just kind of drew on it with a marker and then eyeballed it with a drill press. But it should be close enough and if it's not balanced, like, you know, if there's too much weight on one side and it starts spinning around going blah, 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 then I'll just have to, like, add some weight to the other side or drill a couple holes in the, in the heavy side. So I think it'll work out just fine. And uh, yeah, I did cut it the right size to fit inside that. All right, it's getting dark, as you can obviously see. Uh, so the camera's not gonna work very well in my inside lighting, because the thing is not nearly as good as human eyeballs. But I just wanted to show that because I'm gonna spend tonight putting the magnets on, and I didn't want to just be like, look, I have the thing finished and made, because then you'd be all like, well, how'd you do that? Thanks for telling us, idiot. That wasn't very nice to say. Okay, so here's my fancy drill, and I have this like milling it bit or something. But anyway, it's about the right size to rotor root out these holes. It kind of fits in there, and then I can wiggle it around and make the holes a little bit bigger. And I'm uh, gluing those in place with plumbing goop. I thought it was plumber's goop. I guess it's plumbing goop. Okay, okay, just one more thing. I almost mentioned it, forgot. I'm getting my no dime magnets out of name tag thingies. I bought a whole bunch of these surplus. You know, they're like the name tags. You like stick them on your shirt one side, and then the other side goes, well, one side goes inside, and the other side goes outside, and it sticks there because the magnets. Uh, actually, I'm wearing chainmail right now, so that sticks to me. <laughs> um, but if I rip this case apart, then I end up with uh, this. And that's two magnets. And they're just stuck to a metal thing, which they can, well, they do come off, except they stick really good. Oh, okay. So, since I'm here holding a donut, uh, Shana's working the camera. You can say hi. Hi. So, I'm working on my generator here, right? Oh, everything's sticking to this magnet thing. Oh, crap, it's sticking to me now. Okay, so this is my thing. As I was showing earlier, see, it's got Ooh. magnets all stuck in it. Yes, yeah, very exciting, very exciting. And that fits in here pretty well, but I'm not going to put it in because it sticks really uh, well, or a lot, or 
something. Um, now, I've got these ball bearings that came from some rollerblades. And they have to go and they have to fit on here. But see, they don't fit because they're different sizes. So I'm going to go to the hardware store and see if I can find a collar. Not like popping your collar. <laughs> Look, I'm popping my collar. I'm so cool. Except not really because that's kind of stupid. I'm sorry to all you people who pop your collars and think you're cool. But, you know, come on. Anyway, so I'm going to see if I can find a collar that goes around here that will make these fit on snug. That's my next order of operations. Okay, bye. So I didn't find the right size collars. In fact, I didn't really find any at the hardware store. Uh, so what I did was wrap some electrical tape around the axle and then heated up the ball bearing so it would expand and then jammed it on and I'm going to do the other side. Okay, put ball bearing on wood stove to heat it up. And take electrical tape and carefully wrap it around. Okay, there's the hot one. Oh. Oh. Ooh, it's hot. I guess that's pretty good. Cool. Alright, so I made a big mess outside, but I made this box. It's kind of hard to turn, but it does turn in there. It's only hard because of the magnets. But it's a little bit off-centered. So... See, I put a plus on here and a minus over there. Just drew them on so I know that I have to take this spacer and make it a little bit bigger and then file a little bit off this one just to move that a tiny bit to get the centered better. And there's that piece. And there's that piece. Okay, I filed it off a little bit on this side, then jammed an extra spacer in over there and it's looking a lot more centered. You probably can't see that well from here. Stuff's all reflective anyway. But put it all back together and now let's check the uh, voltage and the amperage. All right, I'm gonna hook my drill on it. You know, I don't know how much power I'll get out of the stream, but this, uh, you know, should give me a bit of an idea. Here's my little voltmeter, let me hook that up. Hooked on. Sweet, so we've got 85 volts out of that. Let's see how the uh, amperage is like. Okay, switched over to amperage. So 0 0.72 amps times 85 volts. That's like over 50 watts. That's pretty sweet. That's about perfect. Now I say that's perfect because 50 to 60 watts is what I was guessing I'd be able to get out of the stream, hopefully. Um, next I'll have to put, instead of a drill on here, obviously the drill's not going to be there, I have to put like a paddle wheel thing on here, and then there will be a tube that comes down this big long hill with water squirting out of it and spinning the thing around, and the stream runs, it's running right now, and it's February, so it runs all year, 24 hours a day. So if I can get 50 watts out of the thing, or even like 30 watts, 24 hours a day, that'd be pretty sweet. So this is what we've got outside. We've got a big hill, right? And then this is water. And it's running down the hill. Ooh, look at the waves. Uh, anyway, it's just running down. Um, but to really capture the, uh, you know, the force of the, power, the water, I'm going to block this off up here, make it... It's just a little tiny stream, so it won't take much. A couple scoops of dirt, really. And then I'm going to put a pipe in under here. So all the water will be forced to go through this pipe, so it'll fill up the pipe. There will be all this water pressure in the pipe, so when it comes out down here, it'll have this little nozzle, maybe an eighth of an inch wide or something like that. And it'll be shooting out water like this. <laughs> Like a fire hose, like crazy. So that's where I get my paddle wheel in over here. So the wire hits the paddle wheel, spins it around. You know, it makes that sound like that. 